Hey everyone. I think we can all agree the world is a pretty beautiful place. Yet, how often do we really stop to think about how we view the world? No, I'm not talking about some inspirational Tumblr mantras. I mean, literally, how is it that we see what we see? In this video, we're going to be covering everything you need to know about the structure and function of the eye. We'll start with a general overview of how the eye works before focusing on the structure and function of some of the most crucial parts of the eye, including the iris, lens, and retina. First off, I want to make a point about light itself. Visible light is a kind of electromagnetic radiation. That is, it's a kind of energy which travels through the universe as a wave. These light waves can have different amounts of energy, and we perceive these differences in energy as different colours. High energy light appears purple, low energy light appears red, and then all of the other colours fall in between. When a light wave comes into contact with an object, it's basically either absorbed or reflected. These reflected light rays are what our eye is able to detect and used to create images of the objects in our environment. So to put it in a nutshell, light reflects off objects. These reflected rays enter the eye through the pupil, pass through the lens and the jelly-like fluid inside the eye and is detected by receptor cells at the back of the eye, which is called the retina. Specifically, we refer to these receptors as photoreceptors because they're able to sense light. When these photoreceptors are activated by incoming light waves, they generate a nerve impulse that is then sent to the visual centres of the brain via the optic nerve. In the brain, these messages are interpreted as images. In the bigger picture, there's a lot of structures all working together to make things happen. But you guys don't need to worry about learning everything. Instead, we'll focus on the key structures of the eye. So this is the iris. The iris is this ring of pigmented muscle tissue and we refer to this opening at the centre of the iris as the pupil. Remember, light enters the eye through the pupil here. So the iris works to control pupil size, and as a result, the amount of light entering the eye. This is important, because too much light can damage the photoreceptors in the eye, whilst not enough light can mean that the photoreceptors aren't being stimulated, and an image can't be formed. So basically, the iris's job is to help us deal with light at different intensities. This is why you'll notice that a person's pupils in bright light are super constricted, and in dim light, they are dilated. Another key structure of the eye is the lens. It's a transparent, biconvex protein disc. That is, it's semi-clear. It has this bulging shape, and it's made out of protein. The lens's job is to fine-tune the bending of light so that it focuses exactly onto the retina. The lens is able to bend the light entering the eye by adjusting its thickness. This is because light waves from the environment enter the eye at different angles, based on how far away the object is. Light rays from distant objects are nearly parallel and require little bending to be focused, whilst light rays from near objects diverge and require more bending to be focused. We refer to this process in which the lens changes shape to maintain a clear focus on objects at varying distances as accommodation. Overall, just try to remember that the lens's job is to help us deal with objects at different distances away from us. Last but not least, we're going to cover the retina. That's this thin layer of photoreceptor cells, which lines the inner back surface of the eye. In a little bit more depth, Photoreceptor cells are specialised neurons that contain light-sensitive pigments, aka photopigments. These photopigments are proteins that change their structure when they absorb light energy. Now, there are actually two types of photoreceptor cells here, called rods and cones. Basically, rods don't detect colour and work best at low light levels, so at night. Cones, on the other hand, do detect colour and work best in bright light during the day. But how do they work? After light has passed through the pupil, lens, and jelly-like fluid, it hits the photoreceptor cells on the retina. When the photoreceptor cells are exposed to light, 
their photopigments change shape. The photoreceptor cells then generate an electrochemical signal that is sent to the brain to be interpreted. Just remember that the retina is part of the eye, which is responsible for detecting light and converting this information into nerve impulses. Now we've got a decent understanding of how the eye works. Let's quickly recap. Light enters the eye through the pupil, passes through the lens and the jelly-like fluid inside the eye, and is detected by photoreceptors on the retina. The photoreceptors convert this information into a nerve impulse, which is sent to the visual centers of the brain via the optic nerve. In the brain, these messages are interpreted as images. The eye manages light at different intensities by adjusting the contraction of the iris, which alters the size of the pupil and thus the amount of light entering the eye. In bright light, the pupil is said to be constricted, and in dim light, the pupil is dilated. The eye is able to focus on objects at different distances by changing the shape of the lens in a process called accommodation. Chat later, everyone. Bye.